Hey everyone, it's your Peacekeeper, and it is time for the next video in our How to Play series on the Japanese battleship line. This is the Tier 7 Nagato class of battleships. The Nagato class battleships were built in 1917 and 1918. The construction of Nagato was authorized as part of the 8-8 fleet program, in which the Japanese would have 8 new battleships and 8 new armored cruisers, all less than 8 years old, which... Probably should have made that the 888 fleet program, but whatever. <laughs> the construction of Mutsu was delayed until 1918 and authorized after U.S. President Woodrow Wilson announced plans for 10 additional battleships and 6 battlecruisers. The Nagato-class battleships would be the first battleships in the Japanese Navy that utilized the all-or-nothing armor scheme developed by the U.S. Navy. This concentrated armor over only critical parts of the ship and very little over anything else. And if you're looking for more information as to what a, a, a turtleback armor scheme or all-or-nothing armor scheme is, I have a video on my YouTube channel about uh, naval ship design and, and that. Um, the ship also featured improved torpedo defense systems that were more successful than previous battleship torpedo defense systems in the Japanese Navy. And in direct response to the Colorado-class battleships being built with 16-inch guns, the Japanese determined that Nagato, or Nagato, more correctly, would have 410-millimeter guns, 16.1 inches, that tenth of an inch. It all matters. And at the time of her launch, she would be the first and only battleship to have guns greater than 15 inches in caliber. Before Mutsu was laid down, the designer had already proposed changes to the design to account for changes in battle tactics discovered at Jutland, and that included raising the secondary armament to allow them to fire in heavier seas, as well as sloping the outer belt outwards to improve horizontal fire incoming horizontal fire resistance. These proposals were expressly rejected by the top brass in the Japanese Navy. Since both of these ships are in game, I'll focus primarily on Nagato's service history. Or I'm I'm not even gonna attempt to say it. If I say Nagato, that's the anglicized. That's the way we in the West say it. It's it's Nagato. I'm gonna try and get it right. Nagato and Mutsu were both present at the attack in Pearl Harbor, and Admiral Yamamoto used Nagato at as his flagship for the attacks. He would later transfer his flagship to the Yamato. Both ships also participated in the battle midway together, and after the sinking of the Kido Butai, that being the four Japanese carriers present, Akagi, Kaga, Hiryu, and Soryu, they attempted to lure the U.S. battle fleet to within the air cover of the Japanese land-based aircraft at Wake Island, but unfortunately failed to do so. On June 8, 1943, Mutsu would be sunk in harbor due to an explosion in the turret number 3. Official records state that a disgruntled crewman caused the explosion. However, historians believe that a fire in the turret is a more likely reason for the explosion. Nagato would carry on to participate in the Battle of the Philippine Sea, where she lightly engaged U.S. aircraft, attacking Japanese carriers there. She would return to Japan to be rearmed with additional radars and light anti-aircraft. She would go on to fight in the Battle of Samar, in which she and Yamato, or Yamato would attack Task Group 77.4.3, better known as Taffy 3. On the first day, she fired her main guns for the first time in anger, but claimed no hits. It wouldn't be until later that she would strike a cruiser and is credited with partially sinking her. Nagato went on to be struck by two bombs in the bow, which caused light damage, but forced her to re return to Japan for repairs. Once in port, she was turned into a floating anti-aircraft battery due to a lack of materials to repair and refuel her. She would have her main mast and funnel cut down to improve the firing arcs for the guns, as well as additional light anti-aircraft guns were added. She would remain there and have her secondary guns and half of her AA armament moved to the shore, in addition to her range finders and searchlights. She would be damaged again by carrier-based bombers and struck by two bombs and a rocket, which ultimately uh, sealed her fate and removed any use as an anti-aircraft barge. Um, at that point. After the surrender of Japan, she was taken in control by U.S. forces, and after World War II, she was utilized in the Operation Crossroads nuclear tests, where she survived the ABLE test, which was the airburst test, 
And she initially survived the Baker test. Uh, she had a slight list of two degrees, and that got progressively worse after five days, and she ultimately capsized and sank her. You can actually dive on Nagato's wreck today. Um, it is considered to be one of the top ten uh, diving locations in the world. Um, so that's kind of an interesting fact. Uh, Mutsu, they actually salvaged about 75% of her wreck in the 1970s. You can go visit a large portion of the artifacts from her wreck in Japan today. They have a museum for her. And every June 8th, they have a memorial service there. Well, that was the day that her turret explosion occurred. In terms of their in-game gameplay performance, Nagato, like the other Big 7 battleship in-game, Colorado, is pretty heavily armored and armed, but features a slow but purposeful speed with excellent maneuverability. Nagato lacks AA, but trades more accurate gunfire and hard-hitting guns to achieve a balanced gameplay style. And as a Tier 7 ship, she actually has really good range at 20.5k, and she doesn't seem to suffer nearly as bad as Colorado does when up-tiered, and I think a large part of that is because she's just a little bit faster, she's a little bit more accurate, and that allows her to stay at further ranges where she's not quite as exposed to, you know, bigger, hard-hitting guns, you know, like those on the Alabama or uh, North Carolina or Iowa. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, Nagato also has a secondary battery that is extremely potent when up close and personal, and at full secondary spec, it basically comes out to 8K range. I think it's 7.9K, and... The only downside is that it seems that the vast majority of them only fire AP instead of HE, but nonetheless, she can do quite significant damage to anything that presents a broadside profile that allows those 140mm guns to penetrate. Overall, as a Tier 7 battleship, she is very good, and certainly one that I have kept in port. Hopefully she doesn't explode like Mutsu does. I don't have Mutsu in my port, so we don't have to worry too much about that. All right, let's talk about stats. In terms of hit points, she has 65,000 hit points, which, if I remember correctly, is the most of any of the Tier 7 battleships. Uh, Ganai's now, I'm not real... F I don't remember. It's a lot. She has up to 305 millimeters of armor, a TDS value of 27%, so you're cutting a little over a quarter of every torpedo that hits you. You're cutting a quarter of that damage out every time it hits the torpedo bulge. The main battery consists of eight... 410 millimeter or 16.1 inch guns. They are 45 caliber in length. They are mounted in two dual turrets front in super firing pair and two dual turrets in the back in super firing pairs. And super firing just means that one can fire over the other. The secondary armament, she does have a light secondary armament of four dual 5 inch 40 cal guns. Uh, those also serve as part of her anti aircraft suite as they are dual purpose. She also has eight. 140 millimeter 50 cal uh, guns and that means that there are nine of them on each side with the vast majority of them facing forward yikes she's just bristling with those those 140 millimeter guns the main battery has a firing range of 20 and a half k her turrets have a 32 second reload time a 40 second 180 degree turn time 215 meter dispersion and, of course, an 806 meters per second shell velocity. 12,600 damage in those, actually. And not too shabby for a, as light of an AP shell as that is. Her anti-aircraft suite consists of 24 single 25mm guns, 12 dual 25mm guns, 14 triple 25mm guns, and those four dual 5-inch 40 cal dual-purpose guns. Her max speed is 25 knots, 770 meter turning radius, and a rudder shift time of 11 seconds. Concealment range, and this is going to be with concealment expert on the captain, 14.3 kilometers by sea, 11.4 by air. In terms of upgrades, uh, this first one, I'm definitely going to, this is going to be the first Japanese battleship where auxiliary armaments mod one makes sense. Uh, not only because you have a lot of secondaries that are actually quite useful, but because you actually have any aircraft that's worth talking about. 
Uh, 100% to both their hit point pool with Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1. The only other option that I really consider uh, viable for this ship is going to be Main Armaments Mod 1 for the reduction of the chances of your Main Armament getting incapacitated, increasing the, the Main Armament's hit point pool, and decreasing the time it takes to repair them. And if you're playing Mutsu, you know, if you want to be a little bit cheeky, you could take Magazine Mod 1 to prevent the detonation of the ship. Have we had enough Mutsu jokes yet? Um... In the second slot, there are actually a number of different options that you could go here. I personally am running Aiming Systems Mod 1. Uh, as, as potent as those secondaries are, I think the AP really kind of lets the ship down, and as a result, I don't go secondary spec. But Aiming System Mod 1, it's going to decrease the dispersion of your main battery by 7%. It does increase the secondary battery range by 5%, as well as decrease their dispersion by 5%, but that's not nearly as useful as Secondary Battery Mod 2, which is going to increase the range by 20% and decrease the dispersion by 20% of the secondary battery. Uh, I can also see a case being made for AA Guns Mod 2, which is going to increase AA gun firing range, uh, but to tw another 20%. Uh, that pushes it out, you know, to 6K more if you have, uh, you know, I think it's 7.2 if you have advanced firing training on the captain. Um, I don't really see much use in AA Battery Mod 2. Anytime you decrease the rate of fire of a ship, you're decreasing your DPM. The only time that this would actually be something that I would consider is uh, maybe on a cruiser that has slow tra traverse but has an extremely high rate of fire. And even then, I don't know. In the third slot, Damage Control Systems Mod 1 is really the only thing that's really viable that's going to decrease the uh, fire and flood chances by... 5 and 3% respectively. It also increases the TDS value by, I think, 1%. Uh, these other two mods, you're not going to get your engines or rudder taken out often enough for these to be justifiable. In the last slot, I always recommend Steering Gears Mod 2 for battleships. That reduction in rudder shift time is amazing. I, I can't stress that enough. To, to be able to maneuver between shells and, and incoming fire just allows you to angle and stay alive just a little bit longer. Uh, you're not going to be sitting still with this ship, so Propulsions Mod 2 doesn't help you any because that only works in that negative 6 to 6 knot range. And Damage Control Systems Mod 2, you know, this could be useful if you're going for the all-out survivability build, but for me, I, I personally think that Steering Gears Mod 2 is a better choice. Anyway, let's dive right on into a battle video. All right, so this battle is actually a Tier 7 fight, and no carriers. I know, and so few destroyers. This is just a recipe for absolutely amazing gameplay if you're in a battleship, and... um. Yeah, there's a hood on the other team, so we'll get to see how this ship duels up with the hood, maybe. We are on map Neighbors, and on this map I almost always start off by going to the islands, and the reason for that is there's a lot of hard cover up there, and even though I'm in a big, burly, slow-moving, uh, somewhat maneuverable battleship, it's definitely preferable to going out into open waters and saying, I'm here, please shoot me. So uh, I definitely prefer going up into the islands. It just allows for a little bit better gameplay. And if for whatever reason they don't mount a defense in the upper part, it is quite easy to um, it's quite easy to get onto the sides of ships. And if you're on the the sides of ships up there, uh, it's very difficult for them to spot you to return fire, and they are almost always broadside to somebody on your team. So. On this map, I, I almost always go and fight in the islands, and that seems to be a you know what everyone else does. Uh, tur total turret traverse the the total arcs on these guns they're not too bad. Uh, you, you can see here uh, that's about the angle at which you can fire. It, it's actually really really quite solid. I mean you have just enough there, and that's about the right angle that we're incoming fire. Just a little bit more angled from there. Any incoming fire from that point would, uh, you know, bounce off of her armor belt, which is quite nice. Unfortunately, like all the other Japanese battleships we've seen thus far uh, that have those massive secondary battery banks that are mounted in casemates in the hull, uh, it, it 
does take a lot of normal penetrating hits. Also, turtle back armor schemes, so keep that in mind. Much better at closer ranges when it comes to angling and, and mitigating damage taken. Uh, much worse at longer ranges, which is probably why I quad citadeled that one in my last uh, Alabama epic battle video. That was, I think, my only dev strike on a battleship from guns. All my other dev strikes on battleships have been from torpedoes, mostly in Japanese destroyers, because hee hee. Uh, so we are headed up here on the the uh, north side here to these islands. And, uh, you know, some other, you know, pretty good tactics. At the beginning of the match, you can really take some pot shots at ships. That's most definitely a destroyer that is spotting me. Um, in fact, uh, we're going to try and get ourselves turned here to engage some of these cruisers. Now this Auba, you know, he disappears. Unfortunate. I should have shot those front guns, especially while he's broadside. This is the other reason why I really enjoy going up to this northern part is because you can almost always catch somebody in the northern part of the map that uh, is is exposing a broadside. Now that Fiji, I was anticipating him coming around that island there, but because look at that dispersion, a lot of horizontal dispersion, but there was a quite a tight cluster of them there. One overpen, so. 1260 in terms of damage not not a good start but uh, things improve they almost always do <laughs> it's the beginning of the match anyway um, you know some other some other tactics for Nagato you do have a little bit more speed than Colorado does and as a result you can really utilize that uh, it's not like you're drastically faster but there is enough extra speed there that you can kind of flex around the map a little bit better you're about like war spite is two over pens on a broadside cruiser my word uh, one other thing to keep in mind about japanese battleship shells and this is something i, I guess i didn't quite cover uh, the japanese during world war ii focused very heavily on this concept of diving shells is what they called them uh, basically their ap shells had a longer fuse on them their intention was for the the shells to hit just a little bit short and they would go through the water and they would penetrate underneath the main armor belt, which, as you remember, is mostly concentrated. The thickest portions of it are mostly in the, um, in the, in the, at the water line, just above and below the water line. So what they were planning on having happen is, is that they were planning on those shells diving into the water and that, ooh, like that, a citadel hit on that, uh, hood. Uh, the shells, they would impact just a little bit shallow, they would dive underwater, they would dive underneath of that, uh, that main armor belt into the thinner portions of the belt armor, assuming there's any belt armor there at all, and then detonate inside the ship. So at closer ranges with cruisers and stuff, you definitely need to aim for the water, just, just a fraction of a millimeter, you know, barely, barely, barely a crosshairs width below the the water line there and that should give you pretty good chances to achieve some citadel hits and you can see there we got a penetrating and an over penetrating hit there i think the penetrating hit was the one that hit the side of the turret or the face of the turret on that new york uh, so that's something interesting to keep in mind. At longer ranges, the dispersion is going to pretty much determine whether or not you can get a Citadel hit. Now, you'll notice we have decided to go south, and the reason for this is because our team has overwhelmingly decided to play a stalling game instead of an aggressive advancement game. And by going to the south, like I currently am, I'm actually putting myself in position that when all of these battleships in the north here decide that they're going to turn their guns... Oop, torpedoes, slam on the brakes and turn. When all of these battleships in the north decide that they are going to turn to come towards our cap, they are going to be exposing a broadside to me. And that's part of that situational awareness, having the map awareness to, to know where to put your ship. Now, that was a quick map check to see what destroyers are on the other team, and I believe there was an Akatsuki on the other team that was the perpetrator there of that, along with the Nevni, I think maybe those are the two. Um... It's it, it, a little hard to, to really judge here. So we are currently taking pot shots at max range, 21,798 damage. Not, not doing too well there in terms of damage, but you can see here I'm really forcing them to make some hard choices about who they angle to. On one hand, they've got a bunch of cruisers to the north. There are a couple of battleships up there. 
but overwhelmingly they are going to be presenting a profile to me now much like up north the two ships that are down south they too are going to be presenting a very broadside profile to me so i'm going to do my best here to take advantage of this while i turn around because i don't want to get overextended with that destroyer there so we're firing off against congo and a double citadel and you'll notice both those shells that hit they didn't hit the ship themselves, they hit just right below the waterline, <laughs> like just right there, just a little bit short. Um, and again, I think RNG has more to do with that than just about anything else. And this is going to force this Congo to turn away and retreat. Oh, it was, there's a Sims. Uh-oh, torpedoes! Eee! Turn! <laughs> Ah, oh, those stealthy Sims Torps. They, they weren't going to hit me anyway. That was all skill. No luck involved. Just kidding. All right, so Salvo out on this Congo. Can we get him? And no. We will leave him with next to no hit points so the Furutaka can uh, get all the kill credit. <laughs> Dang it. This has actually been one of the harder ships for me to actually get large kill like kill counts in. It has to do with the fact that uh, Nagato's guns can be a little trollish in the dispersion at times, and it really is quite annoying to have to deal with her her constant like the like Congo. The guns when they're accurate are frighteningly accurate. When they aren't, you seem to not ever get any real damaging hits. So like this one, for instance. That salvo, not that accurate. A little frustrating. Uh, and on top of that, the Omaha turned away like a jerk. So now that the, the forces in the south have uh, been eliminated, it is time to push back to the north. And we're going to keep pushing towards their cap ultimately, but uh, eventually we will get up back north and deal with some of these ships that are a little bit slower moving. we got a New Mexico coming in. we got this Omaha. I'm going to attempt to shoot at him, see if we can't maybe get some hits, maybe kill him, maybe dev strike him. Look at that salvo. Now that salvo is frighteningly accurate. Now had that Omaha gone on the same path, I probably would have killed him. So not much is in range. It's time to get back into this fight. Now I'm sailing into towards their cap in the hopes that we can draw them back. And you can see this tactic is actually working reasonably well right now. We are ahead in points. We are ahead in number of ships by one. And we have them kind of over a pickle barrel here. We're, we're definitely getting ready to dunk them, for lack of a better phrase. Because if they don't try and come back and fight... What will end up happening is uh, one of our destroyers will cap them out. And, uh, well, one thing to keep in mind is not to spend... I'm, I'm spending a lot of time for all the situational awareness stuff that I was preaching about. I'm spending a lot of time in my, my crosshairs here, and that's because the Sims, you know, the torpedoes on the Sims, they're really slow... They don't do a whole lot of damage if they've if he's got the longer range ones, and uh, we got a cruiser over here. But that destroyer is definitely still a threat, and it definitely needs to be paid attention to. And it's not Nakatsuki, by the way. It, it's a Sims and a, a Nevni. Those are the two, the two destroyers in this game. So I know Nevni has some shorter range torpedoes, and I know Sims has really slow and um, not very damaging torpedoes. And since we are permanent, permanently spotted, you know, it, it's kind of time to, to start going through. Now you'll see we're going to continue on this northerly path here in the hopes that we can kind of corral them into the north. We got an Arizona that's up there that is valiantly fighting on against the hood. And you'll see that I am kind of turning back because they're now pushing hard enough that they can actually be a pretty good threat to our... Uh, cap and quite honestly, I'm not all that interested in capping them out. I'd much rather at this point in the game whoop, New Mexico fire incoming turn into it And he misses anyway, but uh, the one shell that did hit managed to bounce and We will go ahead and fire now that to me looked like I aimed a little bit behind and I think that's the way that shot comes up Yep, just a little bit behind him. We still got an overpen Woo Every little bit of damage adds up uh, nine minutes left in this match. Not really doing too well now. They've taken over the points lead. And this Nevni definitely needs to go away. 
So let's see if we can't expedite his uh, death for a little bit. This Omaha is attacking me. Not doing too well in the accuracy department at the moment, but uh, accurate enough. There's incoming fire from the New Mexico, which managed to come back. I think the New York is still way up north. Yep, he is. So, about to, about to lose. Yeah. So we've, we've uh, gotten out of the available arcs from that Omaha. That puts us back into our previous position of being able to take on any of their ships that are broadside to us. And Mr. Molotov, that looks like it's going to be painful. Yep, it was. 24,300 some odd damage. Um, <laughs> oh boy. That, yep. So you can tell when the ship is actually... Yep, down he goes. Okay, so you can actually tell when the ship is in a really good mood and it, it tightly packs those shells in. Uh, we need to get rid of this Alba. We need to take some guns out of this fight, get some points back. So we're going to shoot at the Alba. Kill secure him if we can. If we can, he's turning away, and huzzah, a sink. Now we've got a York here that is presenting a good profile to us. Let's see if we can't take him out in the next salvo. And this is what I was talking about, like being able to flex about the map. You can see here, we aren't like, we aren't certainly not steaming all the way across the map like Congo or Gneisnau or Scharnhorst or... Iowa, any of those ships could, but we are definitely uh, sailing at a pretty good clip here. Kind of waiting for this York to see if he will turn a little bit for me. But we'll go ahead and shoot at him. Maybe we'll get lucky and get some... Si Look at that dispersion. <laughs> what? And down he goes. All right, so we're up to two. Two salvos, two kills. Omaha? Maybe New York. Yeah, we'll go with New York. See what happens. <laughs> But now we've pretty much cut off their thrust, and we have a lot of people in their in their cap. And this New York is basically ignoring me, which is kind of not a good thing for him. I'm also not detected anymore, so we're going to get a free salvo off on him. And you can see where I was aiming at on him was very much at the waterline. Wow! <laughs> Nagato is in a good mood, folks. <laughs> 8,316 damage. We're up to 93,132. This so far has been a pretty good match. Uh, but wait, there's more. So New York, the main, the, the front armor on a New York is thin enough that it can be penetrated by any 14 inch plus shells. Now, seeing if the New York wants to brawl, but I'm getting the distinct impression that he is about as uninterested in that as I am in eating torpedoes. So we'll shoot at him since he's not wanting to brawl and we'll lop off another 8,122 off of him. And need to aim just a touch lower. I probably would have gotten a couple citadels there, but we've got to aim just a smidge lower for that. So we're going to finish him off, and you can see this actually kind of puts us in a, in a bad location uh, to deal with the rest of their fleets. And s Battleship is moving slow. There you can see I aim just a smidge below the waterline. Just a smidge. 10,032 damage in that one salvo. So we are adding up the damage. I'm going to go ahead and angle in quite aggressively to him. I'd want to present just enough of a profile that he shoots at the belt, but not enough that he's actually going to... That's just me checking the, the secondary range. Uh, just enough that the shells are going to bounce, and you can see there the majority of them bounced, with the exception of the last two did 6,000 damage. Not too shabby on his part. And Salvo out. Can this be kill number three, or will it get robbed? Kill number three with the Citadel hit. Okay. Look at the look at what happened. What happened to our team? There was like three cruisers over there and a destroyer, and somehow we have managed to turn this winning game. We are winning by points still into a losing game. We are down a full ship to them, and they have both of their destroyers, both of them. Hey, we got a guy on our team named Starbuck. Now, the real question is, is it Starbuck from the reimagined Battlestar Galactica or Richard Hatch from the previous? Because if it's Richard Hatch, rest in peace. Uh, if it's uh, 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 Katie Sackoff, you know, good job. Really enjoyed, really enjoyed it. Anyway, <laughs> random nerding. 
now we're on to this New Mexico. Now, New Mexico presents a little bit more of a threat than the New York does, but overwhelmingly it has the same problem that New York has and that its main its main frontal armor because it's an all or nothing armor scheme is easily penetrated by 16-inch guns. Uh, actually, 15-inch guns is all it would take to get through the front bow armor on a New Mexico. So uh, definitely something to keep in mind. Come on, rear turrets. And I'm, I'm actually going to turn this into a kiting. Uh, we're going to kite both this new this Omaha and New Mexico. Um, salvo out there on the Omaha. I should not have used my repair party there, but we were about to duck behind this island, and that will be acceptable enough. So we are going to disappear here real briefly. I'm going to slow down. You can see I'm going full reverse trying to get this. Yes. Yes. Look at that profile. Look where I'm aiming. You can see just a little bit of water there. Now you can't because he's turning away. And salvo out. Can we kill off this pesky Omaha? Can we? Yes. We're up to four kills. There's a Kraken on the line, 118,542 damage. There is a destroyer, there are still two destroyers left in this match. New Mexico is behind an island, that's really annoying, like, no, come, come back. Seriously, come back. There's the Nevni, which, uh, from one source of mine, that means something to the effect of, like, angry, butthurt, hateful, I guess, like, in a non-good way, and... There's the Kraken unleashed. <laughs> 122,981 damage. Now it's time for the New Mexico. The Sims is still there. And ruddering, ruddering would probably have ruddered the other way. But uh, broadside to New Mexico, even in a Nagato, Nagato uh, is not a good thing. He's moving relatively slow. Again, look where I was aiming at. Ooh, ouch. That was a pretty good hit. Because he just fired, I know he's got a long time to reload like I do. Bam! 22,000 damage in one salvo. Holy cow. Very good hit. Continue our turn in here. Use our, our speed and maneuverability to, to really cut in and angle ourselves against that 14-inch gunfire. Uh, definitely don't want to be going too fast, though, because we'll be end up behind this island. And he is still presenting the same profile to me. Like, dude, this didn't work for you the last time I shot at you. And you can see there, kept the majority of the hard stuff out, for lack of a better phrase. And 13,121 damage. <laughs> Holy cow. Just take it off. Salvo after salvo. We've got Confederate. We've got High Caliber. we got Kraken Unleashed. And he is going to die. So now it is up to... Whoa, Sims Torps. And now I am being shot at by a Sims. That's really annoying. And we are on. So you can see here kind of some of the tips and tricks. Uh, again, the Japanese, uh, especially with Nagato, the, the way to aim, you want to give yourself just a, a fraction of a millimeter's worth of water between the whole of the ship and uh, your aiming reticle if they are perfectly broadside to you. And this will actually... Oh, we're turning away because we have no need to go chase after him, but um, just that fraction of a millimeter will, will definitely help get more damaging penetrating hits. It'll also help get uh, citadel hits on cruisers, especially ones with below water citadels. And um, yeah, I mean, it, that's really the, the basics of, of Nagato. I mean, she's pretty good all around, uh, but she really seems to be best when you can actually flex across the map. And there, of course, yes, is the announcement that this is the Nagato battle video. All right, so time for the end screens. It is 158,152 damage. Kraken, Confederate, and high caliber. 2016 base XP. And uh, there's the credits and the XP screen and detailed report. Anyway, I do really enjoy Nagato. She is a very good tier 7 battleship, and she will always have a place in my port, provided she doesn't blow up like her sister Mutsu. Uh, anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.